It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's weekly media roundup, 5.45 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. And I'm Kia Bailey. Tonight, we'll break down last night's heated Brattleboro Select Board budget meeting, break down this week's snowstorm news, and dive into this week's FAA drone flying ban over the Super Bowl with a little drone flying research of our own. All that and more, and we'll do it in the next 15 minutes, maybe even a little bit less. So stick with us right here on 5.45 Live. Welcome back to this January 30th, 2015 edition of 545 Live with a look at uh, some footage of our new 545 Live co-host, Kia Bailey, along with many others in the halls of BUHS as part of the school's intricate one-take lip dub spectacle, which made its YouTube debut the eyes of thousands earlier this week. And a video will not only show you more of at the end of tonight's program time permitting, uh, but one we'll link to on BCTV's official Facebook page so you can take a look at the full video for yourself. Well, uh... On that note, then, let's, uh, we'll move on in our regular 545 Live headlines here. And for that, maybe I'll turn it back over to you and back into the close-up we'll go here. All right, now as promised, into the headlines we go. While some progress was made at the select board meeting on January 20th towards approving the proposed $15,721,497 budget for the 2016 fiscal year, final decision making was postponed until yesterday's meeting, including the board's decision to indeed once again bring before the town's elected representatives at town meeting a 1% local option sales tax that could generate as much as $13 million to offset rising property taxes. Okay. All right, so the surplus is $2,535,979. Yes. We have $373,000 in an insurance obligation that wasn't reserved. Yes. And so we got to spend that money out of the surplus. And we took $200,000 from that surplus to offset the tax rate, yes. which leaves us with $1,962,900. In addition, the board voted 5 to 0 to put before the town meeting body for approval $370,000 in capital project spending out of the town's near $2 million surplus fund. A practice new town manager Peter Elwell cautioned members of the public to think of as an option for one-time projects critical to the town's infrastructure. These are going to be expensive and necessary um, capital improvements that should not be put off. Some of them cannot be put off until another fiscal year comes around and we're able to um, appropriate the funds in the normal manner. Little footage from last night's special select board meeting, which you can find uh, streaming in its entirety in full HD resolution at BCTV's official website, BrittleboroTV.org, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash BrittleboroTV, and uh, on our sister channel, our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, which uh, is just two clicks up the dial. It'll show all this coming week as well. Again, that special select board meeting, all three hours and 30 minutes of it, so much more than we just showed you in those clips. Uh, now, speaking of other controversies, to resurface in recent weeks for the board. Uh, we've got some uh, talk over a new skate park site. The Bradbury Area Skate Park is Coming Basic Committee has been approved to conduct a feasibility study for the land near the upper field of Memorial Park by the Select Board on January 20th. Complications regarding previously approved locations involving potential flooding hazards have caused Planning Director Rod Francis and Recreation and Parks Director Carol Lalotte to reconsider. Last spring, the Basic Committee came up with a list of 41 potential sites for Brattleboro's new, new skate park, which was eventually narrow, narrowed down to five top locations. We would be talking about that far end of the parking lot, coming up 100 feet off the bank, which brings us about to that co-op permit parking sign. PCBs are present both in the wall and the floors and in the basement. And so any subsequent development, if the structure is to remain, would have to address that. Last spring, the Basic Committee came up with a list of 41 potential sites for Brattleboro's new skate park, which was eventually narrowed down to five top locations, the Elm Street lot, the Crowell lot, and three areas in Living Memorial Park. 
All right, time to move on now and uh, check in with our Reformer Roundup as we touch base with Brattleboro's uh, daily newspaper, uh, courtesy of their tout.com channel, where uh, Reformer photographers and reporters can upload short video clips from the field on the go as they report. Uh, and uh, that'll give us a chance uh, right now to take a look at a tri-car accident that saw sections of 91 in Brattleboro closed for hours this past Wednesday. Let's take a look at the video. Traffic has come to a standstill on Interstate 91 North. Reports are that there is a three-car accident just south of the bridge. Cars are moving aside to let a fire truck go through. The police have arrived and are now going to the scene. Again, that video courtesy of the Reformers tout.com channel, tout.com slash brat reformer. Don't even need the Ulber. We can keep abreast of what's going on with their top stories through those video clips. And of course, flesh out all the information with their full length articles, which you can find at reformer.com or by picking up a real newspaper. All right, time to move on in the headlines here. Next up in national news, DJI Industries have agreed to develop a mandatory firmware alteration to their popular consumer drone quadcopters that installs a GPS ban on much of Washington, D.C., including the airspace directly over the White House after an aerial enthusiast crashed their Phantom model quadcopter into a tree on the White House lawn last week, prompting the response of the Secret Service and perhaps, it's feared by fans of the affordable and accessible technology, uh, a move to prompt some stiffer regulations from lawmakers in Washington. And the White House won't be the only GPS-blocked flight area. The NFL announced this week a zero-tolerance policy for drone flyovers during this Sunday's Super Bowl. DJI first implemented the GPS ban to protect uh, airport airspace at uh, their uh, Phantom Quadcopter's inception. Now, here at 545 Live, we happen to occasionally employ the services of that uh, same DJI brand Phantom model that found its way into the arms of a White House tree. And we use it for the purpose of gathering stock footage of notable Brattleboro landmarks uh, or things like the 91 uh, Bridge Construction Project. Um, and this uh, week, uh, we took a chance to compile some of that footage of uh, some of our own drone flyovers in the spirit of this story. Let's take a look. Moving on, uh, we are going to get a regular weather report, take a look at uh, what's in store this weekend. But first, this past Tuesday saw a frenzy of local and national coverage uh, as the area braced for Storm Juno. For more on the uh, epic storm, or the not-so-epic storm, depending on how you look at it, where you were, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Kia, and uh, back into the newsroom we go. Tuesday was predicted to bring us one to three feet of snow, accumulating as fast as two inches per hour. And in preparation, flights in and out of New England were canceled far in advance, schools and businesses throughout the district closed for the day, and road crews prepared for the worst. Throughout the Northeast, many states declared a state of emergency. Roads and transportation systems were shut down, and people were advised to stay in their homes. Some places in Massachusetts and Connecticut were hit hard with close to two feet of snow, but winter storm Juno struck the Brattleboro area less severely than anticipated. The mere four to five inches produced by the blizzard made for less harsh traveling conditions than feared and made the road crews jobs much easier. People were able to go out and enjoy the snow while not worrying about power outages, being blinded by the snow, or impossible driving conditions. Getting a look at just some of the footage from that storm c compiled by uh, BCTV volunteers, including hardworking BCTV volunteer James Banslaben, who we'll check back in with for a few headline stories in a moment. But first, uh, back into the headlines we go as this Wednesday uh, marked the first meeting of the new year for the state's nuclear decommissioning citizen advisory panel known as NDCAP as the 19-member panel of uh, government position holders and regional appointees once again met to discuss the future of the now deactivated Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant in Vernon, including entertaining presentations from top Entergy officials as the plant's uh, out-of-state owners get set to roll out their 60-year $1.24 billion decommissioning plan. We have a uh, piece of business uh, in front of the NRC that we're waiting for uh, approval from and as a result of that we have uh, we're currently keeping 
uh, about a dozen, it says 13 folks there um, on, on board to continue to staff our emergency response organization until we get approval from NRC. Now, in addition to Entergy's comments, Wednesday night's Endicap meeting also saw some big news for the local area as Brattleboro Select Board member slash governor's appointee to the panel, Kate O'Connor, received a unanimous vote to serve as chair to the panel with the duties of vice chair going to Vernon appointee Martin Langeveld, who also reeled in a unanimous vote as well. Now, you can watch that full uh, three-hour, exactly three-hour and zero-second Indicap meeting shot by BCTV uh, producer M. Richards. She turned it around in just one day to get it up on BCTV's official YouTube channel, and it's uh, going to show all this coming week on BCTV Channel 10 as well. So if you want to get some more context for those clips, you can check it out there. Moving on, big news for electric vehicle owners, be they local residents or visitors to the area, as this week, Town Energy Coordinator Paul Cameron announced that installation has been completed on two full-service EV charging stations on the first level of the Transportation Center parking garage in downtown. The chargers are reportedly suitable for any all-electric plug-in or hybrid vehicle and can charge an average car battery fully in just three hours. It's a level two charger which charges up an average vehicle in three to four hours and there's uh, two stations there that are free and open to the public. Um, so be sure to, uh, to use those and, and, and tell your friends about them. The charging stations are the product of a Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development and Vermont Downtown Program dual grant with a significant amount of private funding supporting the, proje supporting the project with sponsors Brattleboro Food Co-op, Sovereign Solar, Brattleboro Ford, Sam's Outdoor Outfitters, Brattleboro Savings and Loan, and Jason Cooper Management leading the way. Next up, as the new legislative session treks on in Montpelier, Wyndham 4 Rep Mike Merwicki continues to keep Wyndham County residents in the loop with weekly webcasts from the State House, uh, including his latest episode this week, which saw Mike and his Wyndham District 4 Rep uh, mate David Dean sitting in to discuss, among other things, his work on what's affectionately known as the Wet and Wild Committee, or more officially known as the state's Fish, Wildlife, and Water Resources Committee. We are really hoping that with the support of the administration and the agency, through the Agency of Natural Resources, that uh, we will see uh, some progress in terms of the largest source of pollution uh, remaining relative to the waters of the state, and that's non-point source pollution. All right, uh, we've got uh, a few more things to touch base with here, including our calendar coverage. That's right, each week uh, a generous uh, sponsorship from the Broadway Savings and Loan to BCTV helps uh, give us a chance to take a look at area events uh, in this uh, busy season for Brattleboro. And for more on some specific events, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Kia. The Ibbett Dance Company, a pre-professional training program, is kicking off a mini tour today in Amherst, Massachusetts at 7.30 p.m. and will continue with a 4 p.m. performance tomorrow at the Latches Theater. A third show will take place on February 1st to showcase their childhood cancer awareness piece. Choreography by Brenda Lynn Siegel, Bill Bob Brown, Adrian Hawkins, and Aurora Crisano is featured in this two-hour performance. The tour is in part to launch Ibbitt's Childhood Cancer Project. Any money donated will go towards visiting hospitals to, to conduct research. The dancers will continue to tour around New England to perform their show for children with cancer and their families. Just a brief look at some of the many calendar items going on all around Brattleboro each and every week. Uh, and you can uh, touch base with more of those items by checking out uh, the full service uh, interactive calendar at ibrattleboro.com. All right, uh, that just about does it here. I have a feeling our 15 minutes are just about up here for this uh, debut edition for you at the desk. Kia, thanks for joining me. I look forward to My more. My pleasure. Uh, times at the desk ahead. We'll be back uh, next week, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. This is going to be great. Oh, my God. Right, we got to back up a little bit. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be so oh, good. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited for it. It's hey, wait, 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 wait. What do you guys think you're doing? We're doing a BYS lift up. Uh, I don't think so. That's as likely as me getting a pie in the face. <laughs> <laughs>